<clears throat> Good evening, and thank you for joining us this evening for our city council meeting. We'll go ahead and get started. Uh, Connie or Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, can you please call the roll? Ray. Here. Cheetah. Here. Lorette. Here. Mansfield. Here. Ortega. Here. Stevens? Here. Vlad? Here. If you'd please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, after which, if you'd please remain standing for an invocation which will be offered by Pastor Star Rarden, representing the First Congressional United Church of Christ. Congregation. Congre Congregation of Christ. Thank you, Roger. <laughs> Sorry, Pastor. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, friends. If you would just quiet your mind in whatever way feels appropriate to you. <clears throat> Holy One, known by many names and beyond all names, Yeshua, Abba, Adonai, Allah, Creator, Spirit. We ask your blessings on these people who have been called to lead the community in which we live and we work and we play. Lord, please bless Brad and Chris and Claudia and Roger and Josh and Linda and Rick. Help them as leaders to not ask first, how do we fix this? but rather to pause and reflect and ask, what do we need to learn? How might we change? And to whom shall we listen? Lay on their hearts that they are not only the leaders, but the servants of these people in this common good. We remember that here in Pocatello, everyone, gay, straight, transgender, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Muslim, Jew, Hindu, Sikh, or atheist is our neighbor. And we live out the divine command to love our neighbor, even if they look different or love different, live different than we do. Remember us, O oh Lord, to care for the least of these, the hungry and the homeless, those reintegrating back into our fold, the children, the elderly, the poor in spirit and also in pocket, the stranger, the immigrant, the student, those who live in the margins, and those who are alone, and those who are forgotten. Grant us wisdom and courage to know and to do what is right and good and true. May they and all of us speak out when it is time to speak out and listen patiently and receptively when it is time to listen. May they and we always be guided by the spirit of community, by the spirit of justice, and by the spirit of love. This we pray in the name of all that we hold sacred and holy, all that we hold good and right and true. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <coughs> We'll move to agenda item three is a consent agenda. The following business items may be approved by one motion and a vote. If any one member of the council so desires, any matter listed can be moved to a separate agenda item. A, minutes. Council may wish to waive the oral, oral reading of the minutes and approve the minutes for, from the following meetings. Clarification in regular council meetings of February 3, 2022. B, Community Development Block Grant Advisory Committee. Council may wish to confirm the mayor's appointments of Caitlin Blanco and Doyle Livingston to serve as members of the uh, CDBG Advisory Committee, replacing Brenda Pollard and, Pollard and Stephanie Heaton, whose terms expired. All terms will begin March 4, 2022 and will expire January 1, 2024. C, Child Care Advisory Appointment. Council may wish to uh, confirm the mayor's Appointment of Liz, uh, Elizabeth Merkley to serve as a member of the Child Care Advisory Board Committee, replacing Heather, Heather Kemp, whose term expired. Elizabeth's term will begin March 4, 2022, and will expire March 4, 2026. D, Council dis Decision South Cliffs Industrial Park Final Plat. Council may wish to adopt its decision approving a final plat for South Cliffs Industrial Park 
which divides approximately 11.53 acres of land into 13 lots. The property is located within a light industrial LI zoning district and will be accessed from the <coughs> extension of Cliffs Drive. Uh, e, Council Decision Parkside townhome, Townhouses Division 2 Final Plat Approval. Council may wish to adopt this decision approving a final plat from Parkside Townhouses Division 2, which subdivides approximately 8.67 acres of land into 57 lots. 56 townhome lots and one lot being utilized for stormwater retention. The property is located within a residential high density RH zoning district and will be accessed uh, from extensions of South First Avenue and Stansbury Street. F, Council Decision, Portland of Gulf Estates 2, Short Plat Approval. <coughs> Council may wish to adopt this decision approving a short plat for Portland of Gulf Estates 2, which subdivides approximately 0.66 <coughs> acres of land located at the easternmost edge of Wedgeway on one lot subject to conditions. G, Council Decision, Riverside Heights, short plat approval. Council may wish to adopt this decision approving a short plat for Riverside Heights, which subdivides approximately 2.65 acres of land west of Bannock Highway and south of Hawkweed Street into four lots subject to conditions. H, council decision vacation and abandonment of shared excess utility easement. Council may wish to adopt this decision to vacate the abandoned and abandon the public's interest in the existing shared access <coughs> and utility easements crossing lots one and two, block one, 14th hole subdivision. I, council decision, comprehensive plan, land use map, amendment and approximate, of approximately 66.04 acres of land located east of I-15 and west of the Portneuf Wellness Complex. Council may wish to adopt this decision to approve the request from, by the city of Pocatello <laughs> to amend the comprehensive map designation approximately 12.03 acres of land as employed and as employment and 54.01 acres to be designated as mixed use. J, Child Passenger Safety Annual Grant Request Police Department. Council may wish to approve a request by, uh, by the police department to apply for Idaho Transportation Depart Department ITD FY20 22, Idaho Child Passenger Safety Grant in the amount of $15,835. And if awarded, allow acceptance of the grant and authorize the mayor's, mayor's signature on all related documents subject to legal department review. K, material claims. Council may wish to consider material claims for the month of February 2022. As a reminder, Council, Council Member Bray has asked for that to be pulled off of the consent agenda. Council Me President Cheatham. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move for approval of agenda item number three, the consent agenda items A through J. Second. We have a motion by Council President Cheatham and a second by Lurick. Wendy, could you please call the roll? Cheatham? Yes. Lurick? Yes. Bray? Yes. Mansfield? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Thank you. Uh, agenda item K, material claims, has been pulled. Uh, Councilman Gray asked for it to be pulled, so I'll give Gray a few okay. minutes. Um, first of all, this isn't the stuff I was asking for at the last meeting. I was asking for a more detailed report than this. Also, it's apparent that uh, some of this was available on the 9th of February, and we got it tonight. And some of it was available after the 28th of February, and we got it tonight. It's my position that we have two essential duties as fiduciary officers. One is to budget. The one is to make sure all the expenses correlate to that budget. When we get these this late, it's hard to review the correlation. And I'm simply asking that we work harder to get better reports to us so we can make sure the correlation is occurring. Okay, so let me explain this, uh, this packet uh, because we're changing, because the council's been asking for a change and, and for better and understanding. So what the council asked for was uh, to be able to make sure that, that you had the information beforehand. So half of this packet, I believe it's, it's split in half if you look at it. Half of the packet, the back half, if you look at it prepared 3222, those are bills that we are approving today 
and stuff. These are the, is the front half was the stuff that uh, the um, information that you had asked for uh, before, as we understood your request that you had asked for. And so we have changed the way we're going to be doing material claims. You should see material claims twice a month opposed to once a month, and so that should make it yeah, easier and help, help you with that. I, I so, appreciate that, Mayor, but, um, but I, I, do that need, I do need more detail. I, I want us to use the forms that we got in uh, July and, and August. Uh, those are the more detailed forms that we were requesting, and if you want to go back, I can bring those forms in if you need to to see the example. So I would appreciate that because these are the forms and the the uh, the spreadsheets that were prepared back at that point. And so, no, they this they're is, not they're not what we received. This is what our I guess what I'm saying is this is what our finance department has found those forms to be. And so that's why you're getting these. And so. And I have a question because I have repeated. I I can't go through all of this when I literally get it five minutes before a meeting starts. I mean, it's not humanly possible. Um. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know what language to use to respectfully request, again, that we get this, I mean, it, you know, Wednesday morning um, before a council meeting, because it's, it's not about putting it on a desk in front of me five minutes before the bell rings. That's not the point of this. Okay, in just a minute, uh, Councilmember Mansfield has a comment, but if you look, uh, prepared 3-2, what's today? 3-3. Three, three. Three, this four. was prepared 3-2, and uh, because that's when we prepare the checks, so that the checks are available, so that if you would like to look at them, we the checks are available, and so this, this is physically not possible to have that done on Wednesday before. And so that's why this report has always come out on Thursday. It's, we've never seen it beforehand. And so, so just as, as, as a physical time standard, that's, that's kind of where we are with that. So well, Josh, go ahead. Yeah, Connie, is this the information that you emailed, us, emailed to us early this afternoon? Okay, so we had this sometime early this afternoon. Okay, thank you. However, <coughs> I, I, and I, mean, I get earlier would be better, but given the limitations and that we did receive the email, it wasn't five minutes before council. Well, it, it was because at least I have other activities that I do in my life and I'm not always available to sit at my iPad hoping and looking and wondering if something is going to come from the city. And, and I don't think it's unreasonable um, to get some kind of a system in place. We, we did have that. We used to get detailed information much farther in advance. If that's not possible, then I, somebody help me, understand, me, help me understand and help the public understand why is that not possible? Um, I, I think that I just explained it's not possible to do it the day before because the checks were just printed yesterday afternoon so that we could get that. Then they've got to double check it and then they go back into the system after that so that they can prepare this because the system doesn't automatically generate this report. And this report, if it's a different one, I would like to see those pages because this report is what I remember seeing, but if, if it's the if it's a different one, then then maybe it's a different one. And historically, you, you've always received these on a Thursday afternoon. So, so um, when when these started to come, so Mayor, I would interject that historically, we had a CFO that had been here for years. Uh, we had a CFO that was part of that experience that followed, and it's more incumbent upon us than ever to fill in to do the double checking that the CFO used to do uh, as council. Uh, we, we had a hard place <clears throat> right now, and I understand that, but that that's, makes it incumbent on us to raise our game. So hence the twice a, a, a month, and I think that'll that'll help us. That's something I think that was a good uh, good change, and and, uh, and so I think that'll help us. Council well, Member, or President Cheatham? Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, I understand 
the degree, if, if Mr. Bray would like to bring those reports <clears throat> in, you can look at those and decide if there's additional information needed. At this point, I'd move for approval of agenda item number K. Second. Excuse me. Okay, <clears throat> we have a motion by Council President Cheatham and a second by Mansfield. And I heard an excuse me. Yeah, if we're gonna do these twice a month and I'm gonna get them that afternoon, I'm telling you I'm not gonna be able to vote because I'm not gonna have enough time to review. I'm kind of surprised that none of you guys are concerned about not being able to review any of this. Okay, thank you. No, I'm not, I'm not done. I'm still t I'm talking. I'm looking at Rick. I'm, I mean, you, you're not, you don't seem to be concerned, Josh, Linda, that you don't get to review any of this stuff. Where are the checks and balances? I read every page of it between 3 and 5 o'clock. I check my email at 4 o'clock before council meeting every, mo every week oh. so that I can read my emails. Okay, well, if I don't get this... Bef uh, before Thursday, I'm not going to be voting for any material claims. Reports. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Linda? The other uh, comment that I would make, I mean, I was able to read it as well, so I'm comfortable with it. But all of these charges are things that we have discussed <clears throat> at several points beforehand when we do budget development, when things come before us in the bidding process, in the contract approval process. So to me, these are not surprises or things that we don't know about. Okay. Well, I'm curious about the $45,000 invoice that I mentioned last week so, for so, Conrad Bischoff. Where is that in this report? What page is that? Okay, just, well, I'm, I'm not sure where it is, but it, I'm going to ask Tom Kirkman to come up and speak to that because that was a uh, complete and utter uh, misrepresentation of, of Tom uh, Kirkman, stuff. Deputy Public Works Director. Um, the Conrad Bischoff email occurred, they sent us an email and said that the city owed them $45,000 that they hadn't been paid since August or December. There was a very extensive email discussion between our procurement office and Conrad Bischoff and it was in those emails, it was described that that was a Conrad Bischoff mistake that we had found. They sent the invoice to a wrong, wrong uh, agency and so they were expecting money but they hadn't sent it because we had balance sheet and we had all of our invoices, and that was that was a total mistake on their part. So we were not in uh, in arrears. So well, we were. We were. We were. We were, but not because we not because pay of the us. bill. Got it. It was 100 percent on their end. It was 100 percent on their end. Thank you. It was just an enough. oversight there. So we have a motion. Uh, Excuse me. Now we have a motion. I have one more point okay. of discussion. One more, and then we've got to um, move on. So I appreciate um, Councilwoman Lurick's statement. However, as has been stated by the Councilwoman and um, very recently by Councilman Mansfield, um, we actually, in essence, don't pre-approve these. We, we do in our budget process, but Mayor, as you've pointed out several times, once we give, once the, a department gets their budget, they're free to use it as they choose. You, you have said that. Um, anything different than that has been characterized as micromanaging. So in fact, although in my past experience, absolutely, a budget is in essence a financial contract a department comes in, says, this is what I need, this is what I need it for, and that money is given to that department to use in that manner. And if they wish to, cho to change, uh, shift between light items, et cetera, et cetera, that that requires um, a process, which does not, should be part of the, the backstage checks and balances in the finance department. That is not the case here. Uh, because when you go through city budgets, you'll see um, clothing bought out of phone uh, line items, and so so there's there that does those kinds of checks and balances don't exist in our current system. So we we actually don't um, pre-approve these and then have the checks and balances in place that guarantee that the money is actually used the way it was appropriated. Okay, let, me, let me explain then to the public the process that we go through uh, for every dollar that we spend. I think that's an important piece. When our budgeting process starts, 
we have a discussion on the budget and what ha happens and what we'll spend money on. So that's the first time we've talked about the dollar. And then the commute, then for, you know, most purchases, not all, most purchases, the department comes in front of the council and says, this is what we're looking to do. This is what the estimate is. And this is what it is. We typically get that in a, in a study session. Oftentimes we get it here. But, but that's a second time. And then they ask for approval of a contract of some sort in uh, your larger items. And then uh, we look at this at, at this level to pay to approve the, the payment of it. So literally, in my mind, we talk about the same dollar four different times. Only if it's, so, only if it's and so more than that, 50, that being said, I, I understand that we've got some checks and balances that, that you're interested in. We're working on that. We're trying to get what you've asked for, and we split it in twi two now so that we can, that it's easier. Uh, we're getting it, the report to you as quickly as we possibly can. And so um, at, at some point, we just need to move on and continue to do this, and then we'll, we can go from there. So we have a motion by Council President Cheatham. We have a second by Mansfield. Wendy, would you please call the roll? Yes. Mansfield? Yes. Bray? Yes. Lurick? Yes. Ortega? No. Stevens? No. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to agenda item four is proclamations. We have three proclamations tonight. Let me find my stuff. Three proclamations. The first proclamation will be uh, regist <coughs> Registered Dietitian Nutritionist Day. Uh, Councilwoman Lurick will read that. The second will be National Nutrition Month. Uh, Council Member Mansfield will read that, and then uh, the third one will be, will be March for Mills Month, and Council Member Bray will read that. Okay. Whereas registered dietitian nutritionists are the food and nutrition experts who can translate the science of nutrition into practical solutions for healthy living, and whereas registered dietitian nutritionists have degrees in nutrition, dietetics, public health, or a related field from well-respected accredited colleges and universities, completed an internship and passed an examination, and whereas registered dietitian nutritionists use their nutrition expertise to help individuals make unique positive lifestyle changes, and whereas registered dietitian nutritionists work throughout the community in hospitals, schools, public health clinics, nursing homes, fitness centers, food management, food industry, universities, research, and private practice, and whereas registered dietitian nutritionists are advocates for advancing the nutritional status of Americans and people around the world. Now, therefore, I, Brian C. Blad, Mayor of the City of Pocatello, do hereby proclaim Wednesday, March 9th, 2022, to be Registered Dietitian Nutritionist Day in Pocatello, Idaho, and encourage all citizens to recognize the contributions of registered dietitian nutritionists and express appreciation for their commitment to promoting science-based nutrition in the hope of achieving optimum health for both today and tomorrow. Somebody's got to be picking it up. <coughs> yeah. It always makes me nervous that you're not going to show up. <laughs> <laughs> That's five dollars. Thank you if you'd like to say anything about you. Um, so my name is Dennis, and I'm an ICU dietetic intern. Um, I'm here on the behalf of the uh, Pocatello Dietitians, um, and I want to thank them for letting me be here, um, having the opportunity to speak tonight. And um, that's Jen Reeder. She's the president of the Pocatello Dietitians. Um, so I just want to, and I also want to thank uh, Mayor Brian Blad and the uh, city, um, Pocatello City, for recognizing the National Nutrition Month and also the Registered Dietitian Nutritionist Day. Um, so I just want to say, uh, what is exactly is a registered dietitian and what exactly do they do? So a registered dietitian, um, they have graduated with a bachelor's degree. Um, they have completed an internship, a minimum of 1,200 hours, and also passed a um, national exam. They uh, work in many um, types of settings, such as hospitals, some work in WIC, some work in school districts, and uh, some even have their own private practice. 
And um, you've probably heard of a nutritionist, and a nutritionist is not the same thing as a registered dietitian. Um, a nutrition, nutritionist does not have the same credentials as a registered dietitian. Um, they cannot um, provide medical nutrition therapy like a registered dietitian would. Um, registered dietitians, um, they provide medical nutrition therapy to help treat and manage um, chronic diseases such as like diabetes, um, heart diseases, and obesity. And um, nutrition is uh, vital um, in preventing most chronic diseases and uh, registered dietitians play an important role in um, improving the health, nutrition, and overall quality of life. And um, to give you like an idea, there are over 200 dietitians here in this area. And uh, we want to thank them because they do such a great job at um, in involving the community with the nutrition. And um, yeah, happy Natural Nutrition Day. Thank you. <laughs> Looks like you're going to get this next one, too. Uh, no, I'm good. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'll stay right here. We're going to go over there and make you wonder if you're going to come back up. Whereas food is the substance by which life is sustained, and whereas the type, quality, and amount of food that individuals consume each day plays a vital role in their overall health and physical fitness, and whereas there is a need for continuing nutrition education and a wide-scale effort to enhance healthy eating practices. Now, I therefore, for there, now therefore I, Brian C. Blad, Mayor of City Pocatello, do hereby proclaim the month of March 2022 to be National Nutrition Month in Pocatello, Idaho, and encourage all citizens to join the campaign and become concerned about their nutrition and the nutrition of others in the hope of achieving optimum health for both today and tomorrow. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's anything else. To say. <laughs> but thank you. Oh, nice. I'll hand you this, and we'll. This is this is genuine, yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Whereas on March 22, 1972, President Richard Nixon signed into law a measure that amended the Older American Act of 1965 and established a national nutrition program for seniors 60 and older. And whereas Meals on Wheels America established the, month, the March for Meals campaign in March 2002 to recognize the historic month, the importance of the Older American Act nutrition programs, both congregate and home delivery, and to raise awareness of the escalating problem of senior hunger in America. And whereas the 2022 observance of March for Meals <coughs> provides an opportunity to support Meals on Wheels programs that deliver vital and critical services by donating, volunteering, and raising awareness about senior hunger and isolation. And whereas volunteers for Meals on Wheels programs in Pocatello are the backbone of the program and they not only deliver nutritious meals to seniors and individuals with disabilities who are at significant risk of hunger and isolation, but also provide caring concern and attention to their welfare. And whereas Meals on Wheels programs in Pocatello provide nutritious meals to seniors throughout the city that help them maintain their health and independence, thereby preventing unnecessary falls, hospitalization, and or premature inst institutionalization and provide a powerful socialization opportunity for seniors to help combat loneliness and isolation. And whereas Meals on Wheels programs deserve recognition for the contribution they have made and will continue to make to local communities, our state and our nation. Now therefore, Brian C. Blad, Mayor of Pocatello, proclaims <coughs> the month of March 2022 to be March for Meals Month in Pocatello and encourages all citizens to take this month to honor our Meals on Wheels program, the seniors they serve, and the volunteers who care for them. Our recognition and involvement in the National 2022 March for Meals can enrich our entire community and help combat senior hunger and isolation in America. Yes, please. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to say something? Um, I don't have too much to say, just I mostly just wanted to thank um, the city of Pocatello and the city council members for all of your support over the years. Um, it definitely helps us fill a much needed need in our community. Um, and thank you for the proclamation for the March for Mills. Um, if anybody's ever interested in ride alongs, Ms. Uh, Mayor is going to go with me in, I think, two weeks for a ride along. If anybody else is ever interested, I would love to show you what we're facing each and every day in our community. Um, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Could I add something? I know this is the 50th anniversary of the Senior Nutrition Program, and the Senior Center is holding a special event to commemorate that on March 16th from 11 to 1 if anyone would like to attend that event and help to celebrate what's happening. Thank you. Okay, we'll move to agenda item five is a calendar review. Council may wish to take this opportunity to inform other council members of upcoming meetings and events that should be called to their attention. On March 10, 9 a.m. will be a city council work session. Uh, directly following the work session will be a special city council meeting. On March 17, 2 p.m., City Council Liaison Work Session Clarification Meeting. At 5.30, at 5 30 p.m., Council Clarification Meeting. And at 6 p.m. will be a regular City Council Meeting. Upcoming meetings and events. The annual spring cleanup at City Cemeteries begins March 28. Crews will be removing and discarding all flowers and decorations. Citizens are asked to remove decorations, etc. They have placed on cemetery spaces for if they wish to avoid disposal of the items by staff. Cleanup, cleanup is expected to continue through April. Please note, in accordance with President Biden's executive order, all individuals must wear face coverings while at Pocatello Regional, Regional Airport and hmm. on Pocatello Regional Transit. <clears throat> Okay, we will move to agenda item six is a public hearing annexation of 45.94 acres east of I-15. This time has been set aside for council to hear comments from the public, public regarding a request by Brian Ball, represented McCormick Ranch LLC, to annex and zone 54, 45.94 acres, more or less, of land located east of I-15, south of Venture Way, and west of Portniff Wellness Complex. The proposed zoning is office park, OP, and residential commercial professional. Staff finds the proposal compliant with all applicable standards with conditions. I declare the public hearing open. Council, this is a, uh, I need to know if there's been any ex parte communication or contact in regards to this. Okay. Brian. Oh. <laughs> you don't look like Brian. I'm not. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Sean O'Brien with RMES representing McCormick Ranch for this annexation request. Um, so previously these lands were part of the city of Chubbuck. Uh, between the discussions uh, with the city of Chubbuck and McCormick Ranch, it was determined that extending uh, public uh, utilities such as water and sewer would be astronomically expensive and unfeasible to develop these properties. So they decided it would be in everybody's best interest to remove the land from the city of Chubbuck, placing it into the county, and then follow that up with an annexation request to put it into the city of Pocatello. Uh, so that's essentially why we're here today. Uh, there was a little bit of some um, comprehensive plan map amendments that needed to be done because these lands weren't given a comprehensive plan map amendment for the city of Pocatello because they were in the, in the city of Chubbuck. All of that has been wrapped up and we are moving forward with this annexation request. This annexation request is being done with three separate entities, Idaho Power Company, Teton Communications, and McCormick Ranch. The Idaho Power and the half acre owned by Teton Communications are requesting an office park designation with the remaining of uh, the remainder of the land being requested uh, residential, commercial, and professional zoning. Um, we're looking forward to getting some of these properties developed and we uh, ask that you approve this annexation. 
If there's any Thank questions, you. I'll be happy we to have answer. A question right here. Yeah, um, in our uh, consent agenda number I, I think it was, it, it appears that we approve 66.4 acres, and this request is only for 45 acres, I believe. That is true. What happened to the rest of it? Uh, the other remaining land is to the south, owned by J Max Holdings, and they do not request annexation at this time. Okay, so we got the park, so to speak, zoned, but you are representing specific owners. McCormick Ranch. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I'm curious if there's any timetable for development yet. I am not aware of anything. We're making sure we get all of our ducks in a row and, and can proceed with development under uh, the guidelines. Um, assuming this is going to be approved, we're going to be developing under City of Pocatello guidelines. If not, we will be doing uh, county guidelines. Okay. Super. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, staff. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. Matthew Lewis, Senior Planner with the City. As noted in the agenda item, Brian Ball representing McCormick Ranch LLC, Jeff Mafuccio representing Idaho Power Company, and Tony Hafla mm -hmm. representing Teton Communications, Inc. has submitted an application to annex and zone 45.94 acres, more or less, of land located east of Interstate 15, south of Venture Way, and west of the Portness uh, wellness complex. A public hearing was held before the Plan and Zoning Commission on the evening of February 9th, 2022. Based on information provided by the applicant's city staff and the location, Planning and Zoning Commission recommends approval of the application from uh, those entities in question um, and located the property located uh, east of Interstate 15, South Venture Way, and west of the Portneuf Wellness Complex to be zoned office park and residential commercial professional. A copy of the commission's findings are provided in your packets. Please note that no written correspondence has been received by staff. Staff recommends a adoption of the commission's findings of fact with the conditions attached. And this concludes my presentation, Mayor. Thank you. Any questions for Matt before he steps back? Okay, thank you. Madam thank Clerk, has there been any correspondence to in your office? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Then we would look for any testimony supporting the application. <clears throat> Come on up. <laughs> thank you, Mayor and Council. My name is Jeff Mafuccio with Idaho Power. Address is 1221 West Idaho Street, Boise, Idaho, 83702. A uh, couple, couple uh, slides in y'all's um, packet, but basically Idaho Power, um, when the comprehensive plan was being, uh, or this property was being de-annexed out of Chuppick and annexed into Pocatello, or proposed to be, uh, Idaho Power was pursuing property on the corner of Fairgrounds Road and Venture Way. Uh, that was to allow us to be able to um, have some future use uh, with I-15 um, overpass changing. Our, our entrance into our Highland Station there um, on, this, on this map uh, was going to be basically removed. So we had to find an alternative location for access. Um, along with that, we, we felt like this property would allow us um, some future growth uh, as this area grows for our substation, as well as any other future needs Idaho Power has. Um, so we are requesting the office park in lieu of a light industrial zone, as we feel that would be most compatible with the RCP and the surrounding area, um, because we, we do want to secure this for future needs to serve our customers, to serve the city of Pocatello and the surrounding area. And so we, you know, again, through this uh, two page documentation, uh, we believe, you know, um, Idle Power can safely and effectively serve our customers with this office park uh, designation. Thank you, and may happy ask, to- Thank you, may we ask questions? Uh, sure, go ahead, you can ask him a question. Uh, does Idaho Power have plans to do more than just put a substation there then? <clears throat> is there anything developed at this point? Uh, right now the substation is our, our primary focus, but we, we have looked at it where we could um, have a, uh, I guess like a, a warehouse type facility, or we could store some, some, uh, some poles, other types of apparatus. 
Um, supply, supply chain is a big issue now for mm -hmm. us. Yeah. We have to order transformers four years ahead of time and, and whether that's to replace them or as the area grows, you know, so um, this would be another, another opportunity for us to have um, facilities available uh, where we can't store them at our downtown office, right? Um, so with that, you know, I know we'd have to go back through planning and zoning uh, department and, and especially want to have anything site obscuring. So nothing is definite, but I could see something happening in the next couple of years. Do you think it might replace the downtown facility eventually? I don't believe it will. Okay, thank you. I Council President, you got me on a weak point and I wasn't supposed to let you ask him questions. <laughs> oh. No, uh -uh. He's just showing uh -oh. support for it. <laughs> well, we are a party to the application. That's true. <laughs> so, yeah, that's true. This was his testimony. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. Any others in support of the application? Any uncommitted to the application? Any opposed to the application? Okay, I uh, don't know, Sean, if you want to come back up here and say anything, you then <laughs> I declare this uh, public hearing closed. Council this items before you had to wish to proceed. Uh, Council Member Bray. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve agenda item number six, uh, annexation of 45.94 acres east of I-15, uh, subject to the conditions that have been placed. Second. We have a motion by Bray and a second by Cheatham. Wendy, could you please call the roll? Bray? Yes. Cheatham? Yes. Flora? Yes. Mansfield? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item seven, public hearing annexation of 18.69 acres north of Vista Drive. This time has been set aside to hear comments from the public concerning a request by Bill Isley to annex and zone 18.69 acres, more or less, of land located north of Vista Drive. The proposed zoning for the property is <coughs> residential medium density single family with a concurrent comprehensive plan land use designation of residential R. Staff finds the proposal compliant with all applicable standards with conditions. I declare the public hearing open. Council, has there been any ex parte communication in regards to agenda item seven? Nope. Okay, thank you. Bill. Who's speaking? Sean, Bill. Oh, not Sean. <laughs> thought you were looking at Sean. <laughs> uh, Bill Isley, <clears throat> 477 La Valle Strada, Pocatello, Idaho. Um, this is part of the high terrace development that we're doing across the top of Center Street from Center Street down into Monta Vista. It also kind of connects with a development called East Side Surprise that'll go on down past the old Alameda water tank and connect to Beth, uh, I believe it's Beth, that comes along the freeway there. Um, this particular piece, uh, we could have zoned it a little bit higher, but there was either one or two lots that barely slipped over into the less than 7,500 square feet. So we just went with this zoning classification. The plan would actually allow 160 lots, and then even with the mule deer um, component, it'd still end up at 81, and we're at 30. So it will be a really nice extension, and it'll get us one close one step closer to connecting roads. Now the best road that we can connect is Vista to center going south, but we can't connect that one yet. Uh, that's gonna take a little while. So we're going down this way and uh, we have uh, every hope and expectation that within three years there will be one or the other will be connected so there's two ways in and with five years both and then we'll have three ways in perfect any questions for bill same question as before what's your timetable bill how soon do you think you'll start building in this area uh well going up the extension of vista up to center street is is completed up to center and they got frozen out for putting the 400 feet of center along the top that was part of our first phase. That'll be done first thing this spring. We're gonna start building the houses and selling lots probably in the next 45 or 60 days. This particular development 
will get built this summer and then we'll move on to it. Uh, going south, we're just getting the master plan uh, finalized. It's been kind of a long process because Mitch is fighting his battle and so we, we don't have that engineering into it, but we've made progress on it. The master plan going the other direction should be finished in the next week to 10 days. We're also going to put the first phase of that development in. So we will be able to go from Vista to where we can probably put a gravel temporary road to connect to Beth so that we do have that emergency second way in uh, within, the, within three years maximum. Thank Pretty you. exciting to see the, his whole concept yeah. out there, and so I can't wait to see it in the next five years. Thank so you for thank what you're you. doing for our community, Bill. We'll thank get you. there. We'll get there. <laughs> thank you. Uh, staff. Good evening again, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. <clears throat> Matthew Lewis, Senior Planner. As noted in the agenda, uh, Bill Isley, representing, represented by Rocky Mountain Engineering and Surveying, has submitted an application to Annex and Zone. 18.69 acres more or less of land located north of Vista Drive. The proposed zoning for the property is residential, medium density, single family, and a concurrent comprehensive plan land use map designation of residential. A public hearing was held before the Plan and Zoning Commission on the evening of February 9, 2022. Based on information provided by the applicant city staff, in the location, the Planning and Zoning Commission recommends approval of the application from Mr. Isley. A copy of the Commission's findings are provided in your packets. Uh, again, please note that no written correspondence has been received by staff. Staff recommends adoption of the Commission's findings with the conditions attached. This concludes my presentation, Mayor. Uh, questions for Matt? Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, any correspondence in your office? Thank you. And I would look for any testimony supporting the application. Any testimony uncommitted to the application. Any testimony opposed to the application. Bill, do you want to come argue with yourself? <laughs> you take the other side. I know. <laughs> That's right. Don't Thank you very much, Bill. Have him, have him do that. Thank you. <laughs> no, don't have him do that. He'll convince some of you the other way. So, no, he's, a, he's good at convincing people. So, with that, I declare the public hearing closed. Council, this item is before you. How do you wish to proceed? Mr. Mayor. Hey, Councilman Bray. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the annexation of 18.6 nine acres north of Vista Drive, subject to all standards and conditions. Second. We have a motion by Bray and a second by Cheatham. Wendy, could you please call the roll? Bray? Yes. Cheatham? Yes. Lorick? Yes. Mansville? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Super, thank you. I will move to agenda item eight. <coughs> Public hearing zoning map amendment to 600 Jefferson Avenue. This time has been set aside for council to hear comments from the public regarding a request by Dakota, by Dakota World for a zone map amendment rezone approximately 3.05 acres of property from residential medium density single family RMS to residential commercial professional RCP. The subject property is located at 600 Jefferson Avenue. Staff finds the proposal compliant with all applicable standards. I declare the public hearing open. Council, has there been any ex parte communication in regards to agenda item eight? Okay, thank you. Then uh, I would uh, look for the applicant. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, council members, thank you for giving me the opportunity uh, to come before you. I'm here today to request a rezone um, on the 600 block of Jefferson, there are four parcels there currently zoned RMS, residential uses. Um, this property is currently something akin to uh, a gravel pit. It's surrounded by uh, commercial and high density resi residential uses on all sides. Uh, it's been excavated for gravel, different sediments, and has sat vacant in that disturbed state for um, longer than I've been alive. <laughs> um, so currently the underlying comprehensive plan um, for this area is multi-use which corresponds with the RCP residential commercial professional zoning which I'm here requesting today the uses surrounding it uh, are all consistent 
with that zoning. And um, that being said, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Super. Uh, Council, any questions? I have, I have one. I, I don't intend for you to disclose to whom you're going to sell or rent this property specifically, but can you give us an idea of what you, you foresee the use of that will be? Sure. So I'm one of the largest suppliers of actually affordable housing in the city with uh, over 100 units here in Pocatello. I purchased and tackled some of the most dilapidated crime-ridden complexes uh, in town. I'm positive se several of you are familiar with them. Um, what we're seeing right now on our property management side is slightly concerning. We're seeing um, people who would typically be above entry level housing, right? Small <clears throat> families, starter families that would typically oper or occupy um, single family home rentals, um, townhome rentals, condo rentals, stuff like that. We're seeing them actually be pushed into our entry level affordable housing. Uh, and leaving the people that would traditionally be in the affordable housing sector without anywhere to go. Um, and so our plan for this property, in caveated, there's a lot of engineering, there's a budget to be reckoned with and several other things, but my dream for this property would be to develop it with residential use to be one step above entry level housing, uh, mid-grade housing. Uh, to allow people who are in need of affordable housing to occupy the units that are most conducive to that and provide people who are starting families and otherwise a, a place to live. Thank you. Dakota, Thank you. That sounds Thank great. You. Thank you. Hopefully you can see that dream come true. That's, mm -hmm. that's great. Thank you, uh, staff. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. Jim Anglesey, Long Range Planner for the City of Pocatello. The request before you is a proposed zone map amendment to rezone 3.05 acres of land at 600 Jefferson Avenue to, uh, from RMS to RCP. The subject property is currently undeveloped and has sat vacant for more than 10 plus years. The applicant's request to rezone the property is consistent with the comprehensive plan's future land use map designation of mixed use. Although zoned currently um, residential, surrounding uses along Jefferson Avenue include a mix of commercial uses, multifamily, two-family, and single-family housing. The proposed RCP zoning district is intended to accommodate a mixture of land uses similar to what currently exists on Jefferson. A notice for this hearing was provided with respect to state noticing requirements. Staff has not received any public comment regarding the application. And in consideration of the application, staff concludes that the proposed zoning map amendment is compliant with Pocatello City Code Section 17.2.170. And this concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions the council may have. Council, any questions for Jim? Mr. Mayor, somewhere in here, and I can't, I'm trying to find it now, I saw the phrase concurrent residential, and that one caught me off guard. What does that mean? Concurrent residential? Yeah, there was, it was zoning something concurrent residential. Um, it, it's currently zoned residential, medium density, um, um, and the proposed zone would be RCP. Okay. I can't find it now. Maybe I dreamed it. I'm not sure. <laughs> concurrent, is there a concurrent residential? No. Okay. <laughs> That's what threw me off. Maybe I, you dreamed it. <laughs> maybe I did. Okay. Can't Any other questions it. for Jim? <laughs> Super Jim, before you leave, has there been any other correspondence to staff? No. Madam Clerk, have you had any in your office? Okay, thank you. With that, I'd look for any uh, testimony supporting the application, any testimony uncommitted to the application, any testimony opposed to the application? Yes. Yes, I'll make it. There's a sheet right there. If you could just go ahead and put your name there. My name is Jan Wardell. I was at the Planning and Zoning Committee meeting of, concerning this, and I was told, well, it's just in the planning stages. We don't know anything. We, you know, and I, I submit that 
why would if you don't know what you're going to build why would you want it zoned otherwise you know so i i want to know what's going to go up across the street from me and why i was told oh it's only in the planning stages i mean i realize that he just said he didn't you know there's engineering to do and all this and it's not a gravel pit it's a hillside and the multi multi occupancy is like a hundred and something feet above you know, if it was if it was flat, they would be on the back side of the 600 block, I suppose. But it's, you know, it's not part of our neighborhood. And I just I just have so many questions that I felt I felt kind of blown off a little bit. Is it? I mean, Jefferson is a horribly horribly busy street. I mean, it really is. How are you going to widen it? You know. I mean, it's it's not a through intersection there at, at Cedar, and that's where you know the 600 block ends, and it starts at. I'm spacing the name of the street Poplar. that's south Poplar. of it. Oh, oh, Poplar. South, uh, yeah, yeah. It'll be Poplar. Poplar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because it's flat at that end, but it's this big hill across the street. Because I live on the corner of Jefferson and Cedar, and. I just, I just don't, I, when I pull out of my house, I have to watch people coming from north and south, but I've also got to watch out for people coming around Cedar because nobody stops. There's a stop sign there, I promise. I nobody <laughs> stops. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, how are you going to accommodate that many cars? You I mean, I, the first letter that I got from you, you know, his proposal says 44 addresses. I don't know whether that meant who the letter that I got got sent to, how many, you know, within, what was it, 300 feet or something. I mean, there's just there's just so many questions that just aren't, aren't answered, and they concern me. And... And what about the, what about the, uh, you know, there's a floodplain there, P and Z, has has uh, written it off, you know. But but it all the loop the hoops <coughs> that you got to jump through to get the federal government off your case. Sure. Because and I faced that when I bought that place because I had to pay flood insurance because it it just barely touches me. So thank you very much, and I'm sorry I don't want to cut you off. But you got because you have a you have a lot of questions. We only have three minutes per yeah. person to do this. So a lot of your questions, I don't think necessarily um, Dakota, it would be his responsibility to answer, um, you know, some of these things. There's the, the well, part no, of his, no intersections and things like that. But part of his proposal I'll, I'll said how much him, parking I'll is I'll give on him Jefferson. an opportunity to explain a little bit in, in a minute about the his... I mean, if you would like to, what yeah. his dream is. I think we kind of heard what I, that I dream is. But then if you, one would, one. if you would, um, write it down and email staff, and staff can probably answer a number of these questions, even when it comes to parking and things like that. Yeah. Uh, what What is there? So, yeah, well, the second letter th says that uh, it was th approved th last time according to conditions. What are those conditions? Thank you. And you could ask staff that also. Thank you. Uh, any others opposed to the application? <laughs> then with that, uh, Dakota, I would invite you up if you'd like to um, answer any of those questions that we, that uh, um, were brought up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I don't, I didn't catch her name, but, or Jan. Jan. Um, Jan's correct in her assessment that that's a busy road. And that being said, parking is going to be paramount to any development that happens on that land. Uh, and it's, it's something we intend to accommodate off street um, on the property so as not to exacerbate any existing conditions uh, there. Um, 
The only other thing that I'd like to add, just to make sure the council gets to hear some good news every once in a while, is that uh, every single department that I've worked with within the city, it's been a real pleasure. Uh, the engineering department, the building department, planning and zoning. Um, Mr. Anglesey specifically has spent countless hours with me revising and revising and revising these site plans and trying to figure out how to make things work with me instead of throwing up walls. So I just wanted to tell you guys that your staff within the city are doing an excellent job. Um, and, uh, you know, knock on wood, if everything goes well, I'm hopeful that we'd be able to start development sometime in June. Thank you. Thank you. Well, what, I got a question. Yes. Yes, sir. All we're doing tonight is approving a zoning change. That's correct. We're not approving any type of building plan or anything like that. That's correct. We're just giving you a uh, the capability of configuring differently than what the 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 existing zoning would do. You can you can try another alternative, right? That's correct. Okay. Yes, sir. I just want to make sure that um, Jan feels heard in her concerns, and mm -hmm. and you know I I don't ever want you to feel that you've been blown off or or anything of that nature. So and those plans will have to be approved and everything else. Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay. Well, maybe maybe you could just sit and and chat with her at some point one on one and kind of explain to her in more detail. Yes. Yeah. That might be, you know, you don't want to start a development when the neighbors are upset with you. Yes, I, I agree. I actually tried to catch her at the uh, end of the last Planning and Zoning Commission, but she had left early, and then I had no way to get her contact information. Super. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor and Council members. With that, I declare the public hearing closed. Council, this item's before you. How do you wish to proceed? <laughs> Mr. Mr. Mayor. Councilman Cheetah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go back here. I'm trying to find that concurrent thing and I can't find it. <laughs> I don't know where it went. Well, you could make your emotion concurrent to the two <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I would move for approval of, I gotta figure out where concurrent we're at here. Approval? Yeah, concurrent <laughs> approval. No, I would move for approval of agenda item number eight, the zone map amendment at 600 Jefferson Avenue with all applicable standards as outlined by staff in the proposal. Second. Thank you, we have a motion by uh, Council President Cheatham and a second by Lurick. Wendy, could you please call the roll? Cheatham? Yes. Lurick? Yes. Bray? Yes. Mansfield? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Thank you, and Jan, if you would email, please email our staff, they can help you with that, and it sounds like Dakota would be happy to sit down with you and visit, so thank you very much. We'll move to agenda item nine, final plat application, Trail Creek <laughs> Townhouse, Townhouses Division One Subdivision. Council may wish to approve a final plat application submitted by McCormick Ranch LLC, represented by Rocky Mountain Engineering and Surveying, of 6.65 .6 acres <coughs> or less into 64 lots. The proposed subdivision is located west of North Foothill Boulevard and north of North Gathey Road extension. Staff finds the proposal compliant with all applicable standards with conditions. <laughs> Councilman, Council President Cheatham. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I'd move for approval of agenda item number nine, the final plot application for the Trail Creek <coughs> Townhouse Division One subdivision with all applicable standards as proposed by staff. Second. We have a motion by Cheatham and a second by Lurick. Wendy, could you please call the roll? Cheatham? Yes. Lurick? Yes. Bray? Yes. Mansfield? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Thank you, agenda item 10, request for de-annexation 2772 American Road. Council may wish to approve a request for de-annexation de submitted by Tyson and Angela Spencer. The subject property is located at 2772 American Road and is 37.83 acres, more or less. Staff finds the proposal compliant with all applicable standards with conditions. Mr. Mayor. Is Tyson here? Yes. Yeah. Could we ask the applicant to speak if he'd like? Uh, yes. Hello, Mr. Mayor and City Council members. My name is Tyson Spencer. I'm here with my wife, Angela, and we live at 2772 American Road. Um, we uh, own the 
less than 40 acres. We have a we built a house on it, and it's just uh, our residential property. Um, it is uh, lies on the uh, county <coughs> line or the between the city and county line. There, um, there's a, a member or a person that lives right east of us that owns about the same amount of acreage, um, about 40 acres, and he has a house on it, and he's in the county. We just feel like that um, we uh, would like to just put it in the county. We don't feel like that the city has any extra benefits compared to that gentleman next to us. We had to put in a, our own well, our own septic tank. Uh, we had to get um, our own pro a propane tank up there. Uh, everything kind of feels like the county already. Uh, down the, we can't even have a mailbox in front of our house. Post office made us put it down the road. Um, and uh, we also, uh, because we're not close to any city um, fire hydrants, the city had us put in a pond, a 100,000 gallon pond that we had to pay for um, and maintain ourselves. We just, so we don't feel like that the city uh, has that access to us either as far as fire hydrants. If there's a fire, we kind of maintain that ourselves. Um, do you? Uh, the road, I think, still considered the county road, American road. It's that uh, roller coaster road there that's not really maintained. There's potholes all over in it. It kind of feels like a county road, not a city road. Um, but that's what my understanding was. It was a county road, but the city is supposed to maintain it. But uh, just like the county, we don't ever really get uh, snow plows up through <coughs> there. Uh, anyway, what kind of questions would you have for me? Could we ask staff to respond to those issues? Sure. Tom? Sure, I think so. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Tom Kirkman, Deputy Public Works Director. Uh, American Road is a strange creature. Part of it is in the county, part of it is in the city. Um, for the most part, the city does do the maintenance on it. The road is currently not at a city standard. Um, and so uh, <laughs> the drainage is not ideal the way it's designed and so we do struggle with issues of, of pavement failures there uh, but we do maintain it we have spent a considerable amount of money on that and we do plow and do winter maintenance on it so is it is is the piece in front of of the spencer's city or county i believe city, city. okay yes so, like i said it bounces back and forth in and out of the county yeah so de-annexation of this property would not change your maintenance schedule in that area? No. Other questions for staff? Um, I have a question for staff, but I'm not sure if it would be for you or not. But uh, I'll go ahead and, whoops, sorry, I lost my, how it won't open. There. Um, under the conditions, so this is from the Planning and Development Services, um, so maybe it would be Brent. Thank you, Tom. The, sorry. <laughs> Brent McLean, um, Planning and Development Services Director. Thank you. Um, the first condition is that the property owner would enter into a non-protest annexation agreement stating that if and when public infrastructure, water and sewer become available, that they will hook into the system and annexation will occur at the city's discretion. Mm -hmm. So if we were to grant de-annexation then, but with this condition, then we would be re-annexing at some point? Yes, and, and if the sewer line extended up um, American Road, which I anticipate happening in probably in the next few years. We do have some development <coughs> interest in the properties further north of this property for development. Um, also, and, and so it would be a, uh, you know, if, if this condition was approved, then they would have to re-annex at that point mm -hmm. and, and hook up to those, those uh, facilities. But I also wanted to point out in those <coughs> conditions, uh, condition three, um, is a condition um, of a letter of support from Bannock County. Mm -hmm. And if you uh, look at the, the very last page of your packet, uh, we received a letter from the county and they do not support this, 
the annexation. Um, they feel it's best served in the in the city and that this area is intended to eventually all annex into the city at some point. And um, based on some discussions I've had um, recently, I anticipate this area starting to develop here in the not too distant future. And I guess that was kind of my uh, question. And I think you said in, a, in the next couple of years, as far as number one, if we were to de-annex now, it would be a couple of years likely that we'd I, I, be re -annexing? That's That's always kind of a... <laughs> We don't know exactly. We don't know, but I anticipate it happening soon, especially with the market the way it is. Uh, this is an area that um, we have a, had a, a number of, of people approach us with um, uh, development development questions, right. and they're looking at this area. So, okay. Uh, I have a question under water, sewer, and storm water. So that's probably not. Is that you? No. No. We'll get better. <laughs> water, probably not. sewer, <laughs> storm water. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Merrill Quell, the public works engineer for the city of Pocatello. So under the water, sewer, and stormwater section, the final line reads, any development of the property wall and city limits must comply with city erosion and sediment control and stormwater management <coughs> requirements. Uh, does the county have similar requirements? Are they more? They do. Are they more or less stringent than ours? Uh, they've pretty much adopted the same thing that we have. Okay. In fact, we share that uh, uh, responsibility and we actually manage the uh, training uh, there and the numbers, uh, the certification numbers and that through the city of Pocatello for the for the county also. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, council? Mm -hmm. Okay. Could I make another comment? <coughs> sure, why not? Thank you. Um, when we first built the house on there, the uh, planning and zoning so that they would never be able to get water up that road because there's not enough pressure. Uh, they said that uh, even if, if we ever wanted to subdivide any part of it in the city, they would never allow it because they couldn't get enough water pressure there. There is a subdivision that's south of us that's going in, and I've heard that uh, they barely got enough water pressure for that. They had to put in bigger water lines to be able to get it, and then I was told that they would never get enough water pressure to make it up there. Uh, the property that's right below us and right north of us and to the east of us, or the west of us, sorry, is all owned by ISU. So people approaching about uh, subdividing up there, I don't, is that ISU that's approaching you? Because that's all the surrounding us is ISU property. Um, it's like 40 acres north, 40 acres south, and like 80 acres to the west. Um, so I don't know where he got that information. The two properties north uh, uh, north on American Road, there's the property north of it is, is ISU owned. Another property north of that is, there's 100 acres that was being sold. And my understanding, they're selling, that's in the county and they're selling five acre lots and they're gonna keep it in the county. So I don't know where they'd be getting water from the city up there and why that would be turned into a future city lot. That That's just some concerns I have. I, so I feel that uh, I don't think that's going to ever get developed up through there unless ISU is planning on selling it. They've owned it for 100 years and they haven't done anything with it. Why would they all of a sudden sell it to somebody to, to start turning into housing? So um, those are just some concerns that I have that I don't think that two-year possibility of turning into subdivisions up there is a, is a thing. So. Okay. But thank you. Thank you for letting me oh. speak again. So, can I ask you a question? <coughs> as far as the conditions, there's three conditions that were in there. Uh, how do you feel about those conditions? Are you are you in agreement with those or or not? Well, uh, yeah. If if they ever put water past there, that'd be that'd be great for me. If I ever decided, I, we don't have any plans for the land right now. But if in ten years from now I wanted to subdivide and and the city had a, a water line through there and a septic, I'd, I'd probably be able to subdivide smaller lots. If I did it in the county, I'd only be able to do five acre lots. So I'd, I think it'd be better for me if that's a condition, if that ever happens. But I'm just saying, I don't think it's ever gonna happen. And uh, I would hope you would not make a decision on something that might happen in a couple of years that's not just based off of um, of, of that that idea. but. Yeah, definitely, if that ever did happen, I, I wouldn't mind putting it back in there. I don't think that I should, 
add city water to my property now that I've already got my own well and septic tank and all that stuff. I don't know why I'd have to have that expense added to my my already current expense of owning the home to hook into the utilities. So, um, and like I said, it's kind of a, a spot where there's a lot of places owned there that are already in the county that are right, right next to me. And so is that something the city would make them do also? So I'd, I'm just trying to be fair with that. So I don't put that answer to your question. Okay, so, thank you. Okay, thanks. I have a question for oh, Tom. Tom? Tom, <clears throat> is that stretch of American Road a primary, secondary, or tertiary street? That is a tertiary street. Um, so the traffic volume counts on that are very, very low. So it's a when we're doing snow removal, it's a third priority. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, council, Mr. council, Mayor. President Cheatham. After reading the packet of information that came with this, uniformly everyone that addressed it, except for the applicant, recommended that we not approve this de-annexation. The uh, director of planning and development services at the county said that they are currently negotiating. Uh, development to the north along American Road, and they anticipate future annexing to occur within the next 12 to 24 months. So with that regard, I'm going to make a motion that we deny the de-annexation. Okay. Second. Second. We have a motion by Council President Cheatham and a second by Mansfield. Wendy, could you please call the roll? Cheatham? Yes. Mansfield? Yes. Bray? Yes. Lorick? Yes. Ortega? I'm thinking. Yes. Stevens? Unless somebody can tell me why the annexation and de-annexation is a horrifically complex expensive situation. Um, I feel that we should help this property owner out and um, so I vote no. Okay, thank you. Oh. Thank you, um, then we'll move on. So, it, yeah, it was denied, thank, thank you for being here. Um, we'll move to agenda item 11, Municipal Code 13.16.085B, Annexation Request, Spencer Pulliam. Spencer Pulliam uh, requests an exception to City Municipal Code 13.16.085 to be allowed a private septic system on a parcel less than two and a half, one half acres located on Four Road. Spencer? My name is Spencer Pulliam. I live on 1536 Chloe Lane. I'm here with my wife tonight, Tara Pulliam. Um, and, and just as Mayor Blatt said, we, we are here <clears throat> with uh, hoping, hoping to get some resolution to an issue we face. First of all, I want to thank uh, Merrill Quell. He has been extremely helpful in all the items I've brought to his attention. Um, I didn't know Merrill beforehand. He's been very responsive in anything I've asked of him. Uh, been fantastic at per procuring information and getting us to this point here. So uh, Merrill did a fantastic job. With that, I just bought two acres of property on Four Road. Uh, for those of you that aren't 100% familiar with it, it's below the prison, about a, a quarter mile, a little more, maybe maybe closer to a half a mile. Um, we, we do have this two acre lot and my wife and I are planning to build a house on this. We intend to move forward. They have electric uh, power up there. However, they don't have water or sewer. So in, a, in order for us to build a house um, for my wife and my two daughters, we would need to have a well drilled and then have a uh, septic system installed. The only issue with that is your, your uh, I have it here, municipal code 13.16, dot 085 dictates that in order to have both a well and a septic system or yeah a well and a septic system you have to have at least two and a half acres um, given the location of the property it's adjacent to 297 acres of blm to the south um, and then just to the back of it i don't i don't own the property but the the bench of the west bench or the slope of the west bench 
is directly to the back. Um, and for, for those familiar with, with that, there, there isn't a single house built on the West Bench. So if you, if you look out and see, there's, there's not one there. So 297 acres to the south, to the east, we have the West Bench. And we feel that under the current circumstances, the intent of this code 13.16.085, while not met to the letter of the law, the intent would be met with, with the surrounding property. So that's essentially where we're at with it. Uh, any questions for Spencer? Have you received any cost estimates on what the sewer and well will cost versus <clears throat> bringing municipal services to your property? I've made preliminary calls to um, services that would provide that, <clears throat> and the cost estimates just uh, right off the top of their head are, are over $100,000 uh, for each, and mainly because of, of the slope that would need to be maintained. It would need to be um, certified by engineers. It wouldn't be that the, the trench would be that difficult to get but the certification on all the work done is, is what would drive the cost up. So what about the cost of putting in the sewer system and the well? The sewer system and the well are significantly cheaper than, um, than the water and the sewer would be. Um, and by significant, I mean magnitude of four to five times cheaper, so. So, so if the, if the, uh, if we're going with city services would be 100,000, then drilling a well and building a septic field would be approximately forty thousand. Uh, well, it depends, and, and I say magnitudes of four to five. The, the hundred thousand was their their minimum number. And they said it could get expensive, um, so so more along the lines of a third. I have a question, probably for city staff, but I don't know if this is okay. the appropriate. Is there any time. other questions while Spencer's here? <clears throat> Thank you, Spencer. Thank you. Craig Merrill's on his way up, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd like to know, I mean, aquifers are not endless. Um, you know, clearly in Northgate, we've had trouble getting potable water, you know, on site. It's going to have to be pulled up from the valley, as I understand it. So how do we, um, I mean, do can just anybody put a straw in the aquifer? I mean, how, how <laughs> you know, I mean, do you understand what I'm saying? If, if yeah. Yeah, if, if, if someone makes a request, which I, I mean, I don't find it unreasonable, but I do have a concern that, um, you know, the hydrogeologists that have been looking at our aquifer tell us that it's, you know, unique. Uh, it has some very unique features. It's not clearly understood. We have... Um, some contamination issues currently that we don't really, you know, we've had to close a well. We don't know why. So how, what kind of regulations do we have about just punching a well into the aquifer on an individual basis and assuming that we can just do that endlessly? Right. As, as far as the city goes, if we are not able to provide water sewer and we do not have it within the uh, 300 feet, is what uh, our court ordinance says, then everything falls back to the Idaho Department of Water Resources. It is a, another jurisdiction that, that uh, governs the wells and takes care of the water rights and so forth. And as, as we're saying is if they have residential lots in that and municipal water isn't provided, they will allow uh, these wells to be drilled. So basically they're I mean, it's just kind of, there is no particular oversight of the aquifer itself. It's just... Uh, Idaho Department of Water Resources is right, overlooking right. that. The state okay. is. Okay. And they've, they've said this is fine. They've given a verbal that said, yes, they would allow a well. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, I can comment on that. I had an instance to Thanks, dig into this a month or so ago on another issue. And IDWR has an online application. If you're for culinary uses only... Anybody can apply, and it's virtually a guaranteed application for culinary uses only for a home, not for any other application. You cannot drill an ag well or anything else with that application, but it's a simple process. Thank you. Uh, Rick, real quick, do you know anything about the Southeastern Idaho Public Health application for a septic no. system? All I looked at was IDWR. Anybody can speak? Yeah. <laughs> Merrill Quill again. Uh, 
The Southeastern Idaho Public Health is uh, oh, yes. very similar. They'll take, uh, if they have the place for the leach field and septic system, and then they have the secondary uh, for uh, secondary when one fails and so forth, and it meets the percolation rates, but I haven't seen one in our area not be permitted. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Council? Mr. Mayor? Council President Cheatham. I would move for approval of agenda item number 11, the exception request to municipal code 13.16.085 by Spencer Pulliam to allow a private, se private septic system on a parcel less than two and a half acres located on four road. Second. We have a motion by Council President Cheatham and a second by Mansfield. Wendy, could you please call the roll? Cheatham? Yes. Mansfield? Yes. Ray? I got a vote. No, I don't think we should be allowing any septic systems in our. Lorik? Um, I just wanted to make a comment. I um, am very torn by this because everyone who knows me knows that water protection is one of my most important issues. And so I'm not, you know, really thrilled about the idea of allowing a septic system. But I do think that you have a compelling case for an exception here. Mm -hmm. um, and while I, as I said, I, I don't think that <clears throat> adding more septics is something that we really want to be doing, um, I am going to vote yes. Ortega? Um, no. Stevens? I would have preferred that the request for the exception maybe was somehow dealt with prior to uh, having the land purchased and so forth, um, kind of with the assumption that um, it would be possible. So I, um, I believe our aquifer is critical to the future of Pocatello, and I have to vote uh, against granting this exception. Yes. With that, we'll move to agenda item 12, Memorandum of Understanding MOU for Proposed po Public Park Legacy Park. Ryan Satterfield of Satterfield Realty and Development Incorporated and city staff request their authorization of the mayor's signature on a memorandum of understanding MOU for the dedication and improvements of a proposed par public park to be known as Legacy Park within the Crestview Estates Division 4 development. Staff recommends the execution of the memorandum of understanding between Satterfield Realty and Development Incorporated mm -hmm. and the city of Pocatello subject to legal department review. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I move that we approve um, the memorandum of understanding for the proposed uh, public park called Legacy Park um, as outlined in item number 12 um, with your signature on authorization of the mayor's signature uh, um, on the memorandum and uh, subject to legal department review. <laughs> All Second. pertinent documents, I'll say. Second, I'd like to hear from Mr. Yes. Satterfield before we vote. Ryan. Yes, and thank you. <laughs> My question, Ryan, is does this MOU materially reflect what you intended when you brought this to us last October? <laughs> Yeah, good evening. Uh, Ryan Satterfield, Satterfield Realty and Development. The answer to that is yes. Um, we sat down, uh, had a couple of meetings, a um, little bit of back and forth, and overall we have the same goal, I feel, uh, <clears throat> between what uh, staff sees this being and what we see this being. And so uh, we're excited about it and uh, look forward to... One of your concerns, I remember last October, was the city doing something quick enough with this property. Does this, does this accomplish what you wanted? Yes, I feel it. Thank does. you. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks. So we have a motion by Lurick and a second by Cheatham. Wendy, could you please call the roll? Lurick? Yes. Cheatham? Yes. Bray? Yes. Mansfield? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Stevens? Yes. 
Thank you. Agenda item 13, annual trade and purchase of handguns, police department. Council may wish to consider the police department's recommendation and, and accept a quote from Salt Lake Wholesale, blue labeled Glock dealer for law enforcement for the following firearms to be used by members of the Pocatello Police Department. A, trade in 11 old Glock 21s, one old Glock 30 and two old Glock 17 firearms, and if approved, B, purchase 16 new Glock 17 MOS handguns and two Glock MOS 19 MOS handguns. Staff can purchase the new Glock handguns at a discounted rate of $274.88 per gun. The total purchase price will be $4,948. Funds are available in the police department's fiscal year 2022 budget. Councilman Bray. Mr. Mayor, I move that we... Uh approve this annual trade and purchase of handguns, uh, particularly as listed as trade-in and purchase. I have a question, okay. if possible. Um, second. Let's get a second before second. we go there. We got a second by Cheatham and a question. <clears throat> Kevin Bocons, Hotel Police Department. Uh, so, so two questions. One, do, in terms of the trading in, is there a reason that we're increasing the number of Firearms use is that just to accommodate increased staff? We've had some retirements, and when people retire, we provide them with their duty handgun when they leave. Got it. Okay, thank you. I also have a question. Is is this the last of the move to nine millimeters from 45s? It is not. There's still some 45s. Correct. The chief's still carrying his. Is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. it, these are MOS guns, so do you anticipate the purchase of reflex sights to go on those? Well, in the future, we're hoping to. At this point, it's optional. If officers want them, they can purchase their own. What about holsters? They have to purchase those and go with them as well. So these are nines. Will the 45 holsters fit the nine millimeters? Well, they will, but not, not to not our standard. Not retention? Correct. All right. Thank you. Thank yes. you. We have a motion by uh, Bray and a second by Cheatham. Wendy, could you please call the roll? <laughs> Bray? Yes. Cheatham? Yes. Lorick? Yes. Mansfield? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item 14, surplus and sell of seized asset request what police department. <laughs> Council may wish to accept the following request from the Pocatello Police Department sub subject to legal department review. A, declare three vehicles as surplus, which were seized during an ongoing investigation. The vehicles have been adjudicated and awarded to the police department by Bannock County Prosecutor's Office in accordance with asset forfeiture laws. B, declare one vehicle as surplus that was purchased with narcotic funds and has been used by the narc narcs <clears throat> the narcotics unit for several <laughs> years. <laughs> Sorry. And C, <laughs> authorize the sale of vehicles through, a, through auction and authorize the mayor's signature on all pertinent documents. We need to move past this one. <laughs> Mr. Mayor? Yes. I would move for approval of agenda item number 14, the surplus and sale of the seized assets from police department, three vehicles as surplus that were seized during ongoing investigations, and the uh, vehicle that is surplus with, from the narcotics purchase, and authorize the sale of those items through auction after authorizing your signature on all pertinent documents and legal department review. Second. You, you had a hard time too with that. <laughs> I wanted to say it, I really did. <laughs> So we have a motion by Council President Cheatham and a second by Lurick. Wendy, could you please call the roll? Cheatham? Yes. Lurick? Yes. Bray? Yes. Mansfield? Yes. Ortega? Yes. <clears throat> Stevens? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item 15, fiscal year 2022 program of projects transit. Council may wish to approve the 2022, or 2022 operating and capital program projects for transit, urban, and and rural services and authorize the mayor and city attorney to pin the grant certifications 5307 and authorize the public transit director to make necessary amendments to the modif and modifications related to the grants as required subject to legal department review for the following a federal transit administration urban grant 5307 in the amount of one million two hundred and four thousand two hundred and thirty two dollars for fiscal year 2022 with a local share of $687,382. Local share is available in the fiscal year 2022 public transit uh, budget. And B, 
Federal Transit Administration, Rural Idaho Transportation Department, Grant 5311, in the amount of $737,014 and $320,405 for fiscal year 2022. No city funds are used for rural, the rural program. Mr. Councilman Bray. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the physical year 2022 program of projects in transit uh, with uh, concern given to all the information we've been provided under agenda item 15. Second. We have a motion by Bray and a second by Cheatham. Wendy, could you please call the roll? Bray? Yes. Cheatham? Yes. Lorette? Yes. Mansfield? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item 16, public transit into <clears throat> public transit intellectual intelli intelligent transportation systems ITS agreement and award. Yeah. Council may wish to authorize execution of an intelligent transportation system ITS agreement and notice of award between City of City and Trapeze Software Group Incorporated DBA Trip Spark and authorize the mayor to sign subject to legal department review all pertinent documents this is a one this is a one time project in the amount of 442 $442,707 with an annual software maintenance fee of $40,678 starting with fiscal year 2023 the one time project amount is provided by a 100% federally funded cares act grant and does not require local match mr mayor council member uh, mansfield Mr. Mayor, I move that we uh, authorize the execution of an intelligent transportation systems agreement and notice of award between the city and Trepe Software Group and authorize you to sign, subject to legal department review, all pertinent documents. Second. We have a motion by Mansfield and a second by Lurick. I have a question. We have a question. Yes. For our trans There's a $40,000 ongoing maintenance program. Is that similar to what you're paying now for your current system? It is. Uh, right now we're paying close, uh, sorry, Skyler BB Public Transit Director. Right now we're paying close to $30,000, uh, but that's only for our paratransit side. Uh, previously, uh, a few years ago, we had it on our fixed route side, but it was not, it just was not functional and it was not benefiting us, and so we discontinued it. So we've maintained that budget in the anticipation that we would be able to, at one point, bring the ITS back in and bring the whole system back <clears throat> into play. So this will do all of the various local services? Yes. This will cover system-wide, all seven counties, all the city oh, the of Pocatello. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's Thank you. Super. Thank you. We have a motion by Mansfield and a second by Lurick. Wendy, could you please call the roll? Mansfield? Yes. Lurick? Yes. Bray? Yes. Cheatham? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item 17 is items from the audience. Uh, nobody has signed up for uh, to speak here. So with that, uh, thank you very much for joining <coughs> us tonight. We are adjourned. Good meeting. Bye.